Well, here on the late shift, uh, oh my goodness, how the hell just put a little step in. I almost thought they missed that break coming out of the last turn. We let his hobbles out just one more hole. They've been going out and out and out. If you guys look back, you know, here this this horse that was trotting in 54, 55, doing really good. Fractured his knee. We had to operate, take the chips out. He's really hard on himself, so I galloped him back to the races. And, you know, James was somewhat distraught because the horse was always making a noise, making a noise, and he some, you know, he, he thought that that was part and parcel to maybe the way we were training him back. And partially, I suppose he was right. The fact of the matter is, I believe that, uh, and, and you know, I heard somebody say this one time. I'd never heard anybody say it, and I've never ever experienced it, but it almost seemed like he had to get stronger. He was. When you would train him the first few times I galloped him, after we were done galloping, he would make a noise. He was very weak in the throat. If you grabbed him at all, jogging around before the, the warm-up, uh, he would make a noise. His first starts back qualifier, he would make a noise, he would make a noise, and um, he got a little bit better, and a little bit better. And, and truthfully, you know, Dominic and Shelby, not only did they do a great job, but they can tell you because they were there and experienced it. You know, we went from the vet saying, you know, there's some laxity, almost partial paralyzation there to this horse never made a peep tonight. Not a noise. I warmed him up myself. Uh, I went two laps with him. Usually you'd never get more than a lap into a mohawk. He's just hard on himself. Just always bullying. And then I told you, you just put his nose on the gate. Just... I jogged him. I turned him when I went on the track. You saw him canter and goof around. I turned him around, jogged him around the turn on the trot, let him trot down the back stretch. He cantered a bit again, but he was getting heated up, right? Turned him around, waited for the gate to come down, plucked his nose, boom, right on the gate. It was stopped in park. They were fixing equipment. I just left his nose right on the gate. We pulled down onto the track. The gate started to pick up, pick up speed hit the trot perfectly, came away well. I could have shot the gap a little bit, and I said, ah, let's just try and keep it quiet. And he was so behaved tonight. You know, I see Sodom a bit. I let Scott Young in in front of me, and then I shot back through where I'm the last. We're going right along, and I know we're trotting right along. I came out in the last turn, but I don't want to move him. The last two times, and even in his qualifier when I moved him, got him to the outside, and he kind of sprinted for a little bit and hung. Still on the left line a little bit tonight, but not like he's been. We've been taking gear off him every week. This is a horse now that just wears trot and hobbles, an open bridle, a set of bell boots, and vet wrap behind. That's it. And truthfully, he probably needs nothing behind. Just got hooked on the left line. I think he was looking to, he wanted to get to the outside and said, listen, bud, we're ninth right now. We might be able to throw down a seventh. Just relax. And I think I was just fighting with him coming out of the turn. He just lost himself for a step and then come right back up trotting. And I think if we had been behind the wall of horses, they don't chart me with a break. But because we were fanned out and obvious, in, obviously in front of everybody, they did catch that, that little break. doesn't matter. He doesn't have to qualify. He's going to Georgian uh, on the weekend. Now he fits the non-winners of next to nothing. Uh, but the, I think that the takeaway for all of you that have been patient, all of my partners that have been patient on how the hell... One, he tried in 54 and four today with the last quarter and 28 and a piece and made a break in that last quarter. It's not unreasonable to believe his last quarter might have been 27 and four, 28 seconds had he not made that little miscue. It was just a little hiccup, but it was enough to throw off his, mo his momentum. Now, after three, four, five starts, we start to see how the hell come back to how the hell. I think we get him down to George and he puts a win under his belt starts to feel a little cocky again we might have the better portion of our horseback maybe he looked good tonight yeah whatever the break don't give a shit I wasn't getting any money it's just an annoying X on a chart line I, I'm not even going to blame myself because I, I didn't see it coming I think he was just he just got a little angry for a step because I kind of forced him back to the left rather than fan him out. I didn't want to fan him out. I was going to fan him out really late in the mile and see if he, you know, trot hard through the wire rather than fan him out and see him flatten out halfway down the lane like I've seen him do his last couple. But but the big takeaway, again, is the horse trotted in 54 in a piece. He came back to where he's been. 
And I think the horse that fractured his knee, that lame horse, is back now, but he's back sound. So that's my take. A little optimism sprinkled on top of a pretty crummy line, aside from the time in the last quarter, an eighth or a ninth or whatever the hell we were. A little bit of a silver lining. So he was good, and I probably wouldn't have done a video about him. You know, you guys saw it. Nothing, you, nothing I just said should be shocking to anybody. Maybe a, a little informational. A little update on where he is, where he was, and where, he, where he's at right now. Gandalf the Black. James near, near getting trouble coming out of the last turn, and then we were almost placed first, too. 51 and a piece, fastest mile of his life, last quarter in 28 seconds. Obviously, we weren't very hard on, now, I don't know what Dominic trained him, but I don't think he trained him very hard. The source that had bled a little bit his last start. First start on Lazex, off 14 days. I don't think he did a ton of work with him in between, other than maybe a couple little slow miles, but nothing fast. So for all intents and purposes, 14 days off, he paced 51 and a piece. Another piece of, uh, of the Gandalf puzzle is put in place. And I think he can only grow from this. This horse has, you know, we've all watched this horse and where he came from way, way back when to where he is right now. It's a, it's a lot of ground to cover. And he did it quite well. So, uh, although we had two breakers earlier on, ready for landing, a learning experience for me also, for about him. Um, I got to see a horse that aside from that little temper tantrum at the gate, which... I know when you guys see that, you, you get you know, put a little shiver up your spine because, you know, you have thoughts of maybe Crantini, right? Making breaks at the gate and being stupid at the gate. It's two different things. Crantini's just a little fractious. No, he's a lot fractious. And obviously, Crantini still made $200,000. This horse made $0. Well, no, he's fifth tonight. But that break at the gate was just him being a little angry and, and immature. He's, you can put his nose right on the gate. I just don't want to get him in a habit of trotting forward coming out of the gate at a young age because I'm worried that he might really like it. And then we'd have a hot, crazy, ready for landing. And I just don't want that. So, uh, But what he did do was after that break, he was perfect. Trotted both turns great. Trotted the last half, 57, last quarter, 28. And I don't... I don't think he was 100% healthy tonight. Be interested to see what he looks like tomorrow morning. You know, if he did he eat his breakfast? Is he sharp? Is he dead? Is he hanging his, you know, hanging his head in the stall? You know, do we get? A, we'll take blood on him tomorrow, I think. But uh, and the the other trotter, Jody, just put him in a allowed him to get in. And it's hard because you don't. He doesn't give you that warning, right? When you drop the hammer, he's happy to go that fast. But that first stride up into that fifth gear ends up right up in his jack, and he hits it. Then he gets all out of gear, and he'll lose him. Jody just didn't know him. I wish James had driven him. Not that Jody's a bad driver, but just James knows the horse. And it didn't look like we were. I thought, you know, as I did the first video, I'm like, you know, we probably would have win at 57 come 27. He wasn't beating James. He was going to be second beat a length and a half, maybe. So we had three breakers. All three trotters made breaks for very, very different reasons. Um, and Gandalf the Black race great. So although it was far from a good night, it wasn't a horrible night, I guess. A lot of learning went on today. So with that, I'm going to let you go tomorrow. I'm going to try and get up at 5.30 in the morning. I want to go two trips with um, Steel Cowboy at the farm. If his last mile is a strong, you don't have to go, go a, a hugely fast mile with him. I plan on training him in 59 maybe. But if he feels good, uh, his next start will be in Kentucky at Oak Grove on Monday. That's the plan for right now. We'll see how he trains tomorrow morning. I'll give you guys an update. Uh, a number of horses, if you're around the farm tomorrow, I won't be going with any horses here in Ontario outside of Steel Cowboy. But Amy has put together uh, all the other horses we'll be training tomorrow. We have a number of horses that are entered to qualify. And don't forget about the racing. We have 10, 10 going out of Northfield Park tomorrow, I believe. Blanton's Blue races on Thursday. I can't wait to watch that race. And then everybody in Kentucky. A five horse. I thought there'd be two legs in Kentucky on Sunday. 
five horses, one division. Has has uh, militant and uh, obviously pickpocket in it. Arson drew pretty favorable too. I think two or three, all the same horses. And um, Dipper is in also. I believe. Uh, now I didn't book my ticket for Kentucky yet because because. If uh, Steel Cowboy and Atlas Hanover are in Monday in Kentucky, I'll be staying Monday to drive Per Lucky, Atlas Hanover, and uh, and Steel Cowboy. That is the plan for right now. Anyway, things can change. I'm almost home. I will have, if I get up when I say I'm going to get up, I will have exactly six hours sleep from right now, or thereabouts. Long day tomorrow. I got to get to Ohio. I'm going to go a quarter of a mile with Crantini. We're going to put the hobbles on him, <clears throat> set him up for uh, his Thursday qualifier, which hopefully he'll do well in. Uh, very disappointed in the fact that we have the next generation stake coming up in 10 days and we couldn't get a start for our two year olds in Scioto. They didn't fill a two year old maiden, they didn't fill a prep race for their biggest two year old race of the entire season, aside from the sire stakes. They didn't, they didn't have a prep. Very disappointed. It means that Gypsy Hill and Sedona Hill, who are going to the next generation, will be qualifying again on Thursday. Born to Dance is in to go tomorrow night at Northfield Park. We're going to race him. So put a little different headgear on him and race him. And Venice Blue Chip is also in tomorrow with the eight hole. Thank you. So that's what's up right now. So many things we could talk about. So much going on this week into the first week of July. I'm telling you, I live a pretty chaotic life. This is approaching the red line for me over this week. Between all these baseball and all the racing and all the stakes and all the qualifying and all the training in all the different places, it is going to be pure chaos between now and the, the end of the first week of July. So, but hey, it should be fun. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. I'll give you all an update on how Steel Cowboy trained, how the horses trained after I talked to Amy in the morning, and uh, maybe even, you don't really need to know how Crantini goes tomorrow. I ex expect he'll be fine tomorrow, but you will want to know how he goes on Thursday. So tune in. I'll talk to you all very soon. I am home now and hopefully will be asleep in 20 minutes. Take care.